webinar today, uh, which is covering creating content customers care about. My name is Dave Custon. Hi, this is Wendy Lieber. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate uh, you spending a little bit of time with us today. Um, just a quick note that you can see our past webinar on demand uh, at the link that you see on the screen. Uh, and that content was about your marketing is doomed if you aren't doing these four things. Yeah, and we, um, we have two additional webinars planned. And while these webinars are part of a series, meaning they build on each other, they also stand alone. So if you missed the last one, no big deal. Today will um, you know, be, be fine. But again, if you want to check it out, it's, it's on demand. And just to highlight a couple things that we talked about in the last webinar, we really covered four key elements every business needs. And they were basically, one, make sure your, your website is device responsive, meaning it's built for today's technology and the way people consume information today, which is typically through mobile devices as much, if not more, than laptops and desktops. The, the second element was have a blog, have content that you're constantly creating and publishing. Make sure your social media is using your, your content, which now because you have a blog, you've got your own unique content that you can share with your community via social media. And then the last was communicate with your database. You know, have a newsletter, have some type of monthly communication that you're sharing with your audience to keep yourself top of mind and to provide really valuable information. And so today we're going to dig in a little bit more to the second piece, um, which is Broader than blog, we're really going to be talking about content overall, and the key takeaways you can expect is understand the type of content your customers want and need and how to develop creative topics, and we're really going to delve into those two quite deeply, and then we're going to highlight managing your content once it's been published and then how to build on, on that with your social media, and in our, our webinars coming up, we're going to go deeper deeper into those. So. Before we, we get started, I wanted to just set the context of why are we doing this? Why are we talking about this? Why all of a sudden is content marketing such a buzzword? And the, the key reason is that everything that we're talking about is the 21st century business model. It doesn't matter what kind of business you're in today, you are operating online. You are building your audience online. People are consuming information about you online. And it's super important that you understand that and that you accept that and that you embrace that and, and leverage that. So some, some key elements of what a 21st century business model entails. One of the most important things is getting found easily on the Internet, on your digital platform, adding value and building trust. And you do that by creating and distributing content for people, things that solve problems, generate interest, um, and add value. You capture leads and build a list of prospects. Because people are enjoying your content and want more of it, they're willing to give you some of their information in exchange um, for, for your content to make sure they're on your list. And then you've got to you know, keep that up. It's not a one and done type of thing. It's constant. You know, You are now a publisher, whether or not you think so. You're a publisher. And so you've got to continue to create valuable content and give it away. Follow up automatically. You know, you've, you've got to develop systems and processes. So as people opt in and ask for information from you, you've got systems that make sure that this happens automatically. And then, you know, on an ongoing basis, deepen your relationships and build a following of loyal customers and raving fans. And again, you do that by just constantly giving, educating, and, um, you know, letting people have, you know, some of your, your best information. So at the end of the day, all of this in the aggregate, you do all of these things. The end result is you will create more conversations, more conversations, create more opportunities. And if we're if we're marketing leaders or sales leaders or even a, uh, a, a company owner, that's really why you're in business. Right. That's your job is to create conversations with them, which then lead to opportunities and lead to sales. So a big piece of the, the 21st century business model and really everything that we talked about in webinar one is all about building your digital platform and 
there are over 1.2 billion websites today. So the importance of building a digital platform allows you to rise above all of that to be seen and be heard. And it includes channels, which you know are your social media, your website, your blog, your email. It builds credibility. Um, it positions you and your brand as an expert. It delivers content and it engages with your audience. And here's a, a visual of, of what that looks like. And it's so, it's so it's such a simple concept that we used a, a, a marker and paper to illustrate that to you. Um, but it's important to note that, you know, a lot of a lot of, you know, marketing and sales leaders out there don't really understand that there's so many of these elements that make up your digital platform. In our company, we sometimes refer to it as your digital footprint or your online footprint. And there are a couple of things on here that are that are somewhat um, offline or old media as we might call it, uh, PR, public relations being one of them, traditional media being another, but all of these together create your online uh, presence. And and even with a, something like traditional media, it's always leading someone back to online anyway. Uh, very, I can't think of many instances where, where there isn't um, an advertisement that has some call to action that says, visit us online or check us out online or, or ch- check our YouTube channel. So at, at, again, at the end of the day, it, it all leads back to your online footprint. And I think when you when you view it in this context, you really see just how powerful it is and just how much you have at your fingertips that you may not realize because you may still be thinking of your business from a, an older school type of way, you know, not because you are old school, but just you, you've not really thought about it this way because it, it truly is transformational what our industry has gone through in the last decade. And it's a completely different business model. And I think it's one of those kind of things that until you actually think about and realize, you know, you, you don't you don't understand the magnitude of what is now available at our fingertips, you know, for businesses of all sizes, which I think is so exciting because it allows really a, a more level playing field for people who embrace this, understand this and learn how to leverage it, which we're hoping to help you today. So content is the new advertising. You know, customers are tired of disruptive ads, disruptive communication. People don't want to be called. They don't want, you know, to be sold to. They don't want, you know, to get stuff in the mail. Um, Not that those things still cannot work in conjunction with other things, but they no longer can stand alone like they used to. And we found that the most effective marketers publish new content for their audience several times a week, and some every single day, and that those websites benefit um, their traffic. They, they, they get that traffic from that content. And when you search for them, they're showing up on the top pages of Google because they're developing that great content. And the best content will always win. And if you think back, you know, if you go back in time a little bit before uh, before there was so so many websites and so much access to information, brands would have to, as Wendy said, uh, they would have to disrupt someone. They would have to um, jump in, in front of them, so to speak. And you don't have to do that now as, as a brand. Um, it's really phenomenal to be able to publish or push out your own information because there are millions potentially of people that are looking for what it is that you uh, specialize in. So it's very, it's very exciting to be able to do that. So before we, we get into kind of, you know, why it's so hard to do this, let's just very simply, what is content? It's information that's available electronically. That can be an article, that can be a blog post, an infographic, a video, a podcast, you know, an ebook. It can be, you know, a number of different formats, but it all should be be interesting, entertaining, thought provoking, and educational, to, to name a few. So why why is it that, um, be, you know, despite knowing how effective content can be, that there's still so many people not doing it? And and the simple reason is because it's hard. It's actually, you know, one of the toughest things to figure out how to produce the kind of content that gets noticed and you know, when, um, you know, surveyed, you know, what, what one of the biggest issues is 41 states have that producing the right kind of content that engages prospects and customers is a big challenge. So we're hoping to help you overcome that today. And we're, we're just going to share with you what we do. 
You know, at Content Bacon, we have hundreds of customers and we're developing thousands of pieces of content. So we've developed some pretty good prospects. You know, we consider ourselves experts in this area. And so we're just going to share with you what we do in hopes that you can take some of this and start doing it yourself. And just want to point out, if you look at this graph, if you really combine the 41% and the 20% next to it, which is which is referencing being able to produce enough content, you can see that it's a gigantic challenge for companies. Um, and hopefully the content in this webinar will help some of you guys out there overcome that. And so speaking of challenges and overcoming them, you know, one of the things that we are always educating our customers and prospects are uh, on, um, you know, what not to do or really, you know, what 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 should the content be focused on? And so content marketing and the type of content that we advocate for is not advertising or rather don't mistake it for advertising because it's a completely different animal. Um, advertising, traditional advertising is often about, you know, me, 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 the company. Um, and in the content marketing game, it's not about me or it's not about the brand or how, how great we are, how big and fast and strong we are. It's about you, the prospect. And that is why customers go online or rather prospects go online. Uh, and they can do this in, 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 without, without it being a threatening situation. They can find the information that, that it is that they're looking for. Um, and just because creative content may, may not be effective immediately, um, or rather doesn't mean it cannot generate leads because it is creative content. So where do you start? So this is just, um, you know, kind of a, a high level overview of what effective content should look like, how it should be structured. And many of you probably already know this, but one, it has to have a headline that instantly commands attention. It has to have an intro that pulls the audience in, you know, makes it hard to turn away. And Again, the content needs to solve a problem that the audience generally cares about. So all of this is going to be different depending on who your customer is and what your business is. I mean, really, no two pieces of content are alike. There needs to be a singular point or theme to communicate. It's got to kind of be simple. Using stories and examples to kind of illustrate that are very effective. And you've got to have a call to action. So even though we're saying that the content's not about you and you really shouldn't use it to sell, that doesn't mean that you can't have calls to action that create additional opportunities to communicate. And so here's just an ex example of a piece of content that's structured well. It's got an attention-grabbing headline. It's got a good subhead. It's very simply written with bullet points. You don't really even have to read it. You can kind of just you know glance over it and get the gist of it. And so this is a piece of content that you know worked well, you know generated interest, and um, is you know kind of a model that you could kind of look at for a blog article. It's got an impactful visual. So this is one of our customers, and and just to touch on what Wendy said about you know promotional versus non promotional. You can't see it in this image, but um, at the at the very bottom there's a uh, there's a summary of sorts, and it does it does have a call to action with respect to hey if you if you think your website sucks or if you if you have some issues or problems uh, and would like to have a have a conversation with us this is how you can reach us so our you know our our best practices for our customers are to always end uh, every piece of content that way. So in terms of of getting started, you can't. You can't create amazing content unless you know who your audience is. So you've really got to create what we call a customer avatar. And you might have several of these. And it's really interesting because in the process to create content is often just such a great business process to go through anyway. Because oftentimes businesses get so into their business and running their business day in and day out. When you ask these simple questions, a lot of times people are stumped and they haven't taken the time lately to th to think about them. So the first step that we always do in our process is understanding who are we writing for? Who are we creating content for? And understanding who the ideal customers are and really getting clear about that, not just in terms of, you know, overall demographics, but getting very, very specific, describing them, giving them a name, giving them a picture. And 
you really have to involve the people who are on the front line for this. So the sales team, the customer service team, the people that are interacting. And again, it's such a valuable business process that, you know, as we walk our customers through this, they, they always are enlightened and glean something new because again, you're not having these conversations all the time. And, and going through this process is so helpful, not only from a content generation standpoint, but really from a business development standpoint. And it's a, you know, if you think about the exercise, you can, you can create content themes or content ideas um, by uh, integrating or involving all of the different departments or phases or steps a, your customer may go through. You, know, you think about there's prospecting, there's the actual selling, there's closing the sale, there's the onboarding of a customer, there's servicing a customer, there's warranties and guarantees and, and so many parts of a business where content can play a role. And again, at the end of the day, it may all help uh, with the sales process. You know, there may be a customer or a prospect out there that is afraid to engage with you or afraid to buy from you or hesitant because they think the onboarding process may be difficult or the warranty implementation process may be difficult. You can use content to address those things. And also, I think it's important not just to think of content for prospects and new customers. It's a great tool to use for your current customers to keep them engaged, to keep them educated, you know, to keep them informed on what's going on. And again, that can be used to upsell them or to communicate different offerings you have. It can, it can all be done from the context of education can also be used internally. If you've got a big internal team, you can use content as a great way as well for team building and to create a culture of excellence. This is, this is what, a, in, in a real tactical sense or a real granular sense, what an avatar may look like. Um, you know, we recommend putting a, putting a face on it, putting a, a gender to it, putting very specific likes and dislikes uh, the more granular you can get with your customer avatar, the more you can target that avatar with your content. And again, like we mentioned, you may have several different types of avatars if you have different customer segments. You know, you may have a consumer avatar, you may have a business avatar, you know, you may have um, a decision-making avatar versus an, uh, you know, someone who does more of the implementation. So you can have several different avatars, just like you can have different types of content targeted to those avatars. So how to start. So again, when we start this process for a client, one of the first things we do is after we develop what the customer avatar is, is we start to think about what the topics or themes might be. And this again is just a series of questions and brainstorm storming sessions to understand what, what the sales process looks like, you know, or what some of the issues are with current customers. And we just come up with as many different questions that either current customers ask, you know, any obstacles that salespeople face when they're trying to land the deal, what the customer service team is dealing with, you know, what, what keeps customers up at night, what some of the misconceptions in the industry are. You know, I, I sometimes like to think of it as if you were in, you know, an auditorium and you had all your potential prospects and customers in the room, you know, what are some, some things that you wish that they knew, you know, so that they become better customers. And so this is just a great kind of brainstorming process where you really just come up with as many different ideas and topics to begin with. And if you think about that, that's such a great exercise to do. If you, if you were to visualize that exercise, would you ever stand on that stage and say, we are the best? Would you say we are the, the biggest, fastest and strongest? I don't think you would. I think you would try to educate them on how your process works or how your product has been manufactured. Um, you know, being humble, I think, is the, is the way you would convey that information and your content should, should mirror that. And I think also your best customers are your most educated customers. So the more you educate them, it just means that they're just going to be a better customer. You know, it's the customer that thinks they can do what you do better or doesn't really understand what you do that's going to be you know, kind of the pain, but you can, again, use content to educate them and either weed out the ones that you don't want, but really educate the ones that you do want so that they become your best customers. So then, again, um, from, a, from a process standpoint, after you've got all of these different ideas on paper and you've started to prioritize them and, you know, cross off the bad ones, 
you determine the type of content you want to create and create a 90 day plan. And we use 90 days. That might seem like a lot, but we find it's easier to do 90 days than it is 30 days. Because once you start this ball rolling, the, the amount of ideas, you know, just kind of start flowing. And so doing 90, 120 days actually becomes really easy. And you can actually start to kind of see themes and, um, and where you can build on various things. So it's, I think it's easier, you know, we think it's easier to do a 90 day plan versus um, a 30 day plan. And we also always leave room for new ideas because maybe something happens in your industry in the news that's, you know, relatable and um, you want to be able to jump on that. So that's why we don't call this a calendar and why we call it a plan, because we like to leave it somewhat flexible so that you can be um, opportunistic. And I think when you when you look at the type of ways your content can take form, you know, it can be educational, it can be a book review, it can be a list of resources that you put together. You know, it could be another article that you see in the New York Times that's a really great article, but it's really long and you just want to pull, you know, what you thought was interesting and valuable for your audience. It can be a Q&A session. It can be, you know, you might have gone to a conference and had some, you know, key takeaways. And so you want to share that with your audience. So, so there's so many different formats it can and it should take that I think, again, once you start looking at the different types of content, it becomes a lot, you know, a lot less daunting, I guess. So these are our content guidelines. So every piece of content that comes through, um, you know, our production, if you will, must meet this checklist. And you should develop your own checklist. You can steal ours. You know, we're happy to share this with you. But we believe that, you know, every piece of content, bacon, Content needs to tell a great story. It needs to add value. It needs to solve a problem, educate, entertain, delight, enhance their life somehow. It needs to bring something unique that they can't find elsewhere. We don't want to just create content that if you searched, you know, for six ways to create a blog post, you, know, you could find the same thing over and over. We try to bring something really unique, and that's not always easy, but we that's you know certainly um, one of the criteria we try to meet. It needs to be searchable and shareable. So we're thinking about keywords and key phrases and things that someone might search into a, a Google box. And we're also thinking about, you know, the fact that we want people to share it on Facebook or LinkedIn or, you know, other, other forms of social media. We also want to make sure it's written in our client's unique voice. So we're always learning as much as we can about their tone, their personality, so that when they read it, they feel like, wow, you know, I couldn't have said this better myself. It's got to be visually pleasing and it has a call to action. You know, with, with respect to the voice, the unique voice, that's really important. Um, it, it, it's a, if you think about novels that you read or some of your favorite novels that you've read, there is clearly a voice. There is a style. There is a tone. And great content has that. Really, really lame content doesn't have it. It's sort of milk toast. It's just words on a page. And you want your content to uh, to draw someone in. You want them to to want to continue to read. So if you're going to do this internally, someone needs to own that. Someone needs to have some skill in that area because uh, it's really important to, to make the content sticky. Um, and on that note, you know these are some these are some things that we always follow. Um, and this for us is really the subtext here is is selling in a way. Um, you know people. People can can identify authenticity. It's a it's sort of an uh, it's an innate ability that people are many people are born with, and you can tell when someone's being authentic. You can you can tell when they're being vulnerable, and that builds trust, um, as does telling the truth, of course. Um, but we encourage our you know the our writers and and our uh, prospects that we're educating people on webinars that we talk to to get uncomfortable, get out of your comfort zone, and have a position. Don't be afraid to say something. Um, you know, people who are wishy-washy or companies that are wishy-washy, they don't really have any fans or they have a harder time getting fans because they stand for nothing. And if you, if you mean something for everyone, then you really mean nothing to no one. So have something to say. Yeah. And I think again, your content is such a great way to let people, you know, kind of see behind the curtain and really get into your head and get to know you because it's, it's, you know, you've got a personality, your company has a personality. You may never meet face-to-face -face any of your customers, but through your content, 
you can get to know them, they can get to know you, and you can develop a bond with them that lasts, you know, forever and ever. So in terms of managing the process, so once you've done this and you've started writing or creating, you know, videos or images, whatever mix you choose, it's an ongoing process and consistency is key. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to start off doing it perfect. Um, make it bad, make it better is a great, you know, way to, way to think about it. So you need to revisit your calendar every 90 days at least. Um, you want to have a library of all your titles that you can review and build on. You know, you, you'll start to see, wow, you know, we've, you know, we've written, you know, six blogs on this one topic. Maybe we can turn that into an ebook or a video that you can use a, a different way. And then, you know, you can really use the library when you create new topics because you might, you might see the opportunity for a series and add additional topics in that to go more in depth. And you really want to make sure everyone in your company has access to your library of content so that they can use it for customer interactions. You want your salespeople to be able to, you know, send off, you know, a blog on a particular topic that, that is relevant to them or your customer service team. Like you really want to use the content and that takes some discipline and it takes obviously communication and it takes a process, but it could be an extremely valuable way because everything you're creating is a sales tool. It's an opportunity, you know, for, for an additional conversation. So uh, social media, again, is still, you know, it's going through, um, it's evolving. It's continuing to evolve. And a lot of companies still haven't really um, become skilled at it. And we like, you know, we like to joke. We've, we've actually put out some, some images and some advertising ourselves of, you know, if you think the image of the birthday cake, you know, for the, you know, the admin's birthday is, is content marketing, then you're doing it wrong. Um, while it's okay to promote that kind of stuff, that can't be all that you do in, in social media. So, you know, now that you've written some articles and you have them and, and they're valuable and they're, and they're residing on your website, what do you do with them? Well, so for our customers and, and what we advocate for is that you promote that content in all of your social media profiles and you use strong headlines that are native to the platform. And what that means is, the language that you use on Twitter is different than the language that you would use on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Google+, et cetera, et cetera. They're different platforms. They're different. Uh, people are there for different reasons, and you must use different language uh, to be most effective. Uh, we recommend reaching out to other influencers and sharing, uh, sharing with them on social media. Uh, mention companies in your posts to gain attention and, of course, to be social. It's called social media for a reason. Uh, we recommend commenting and interacting with other uh, companies, uh, customers, prospects, people who have who have asked questions. Um, and don't be afraid. You know, if someone has complained about you or if someone has left a negative comment about your company or service, do not delete it. Use it as an opportunity to respond to it. Show other people what your uh, business policies are like, how you handle uh, unhappy customers. It, it's really an opportunity. Not, it's not a bad thing. Um, and share your content throughout the week, multiple times, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for instance, could be your, your days to share your articles, uh, and test different headlines. Um, uh, just because a headline worked on Monday doesn't mean it's going to work again on Tuesday or Wednesday. So experiment and just do it, you know, ha doing it well or doing it mediocre is better than not doing it at all. Um, use visuals, make sure you use visuals and participate in, in, in groups, you know, appropriate groups for your, your market. So we put together some tools that we use that are great starting points and, and, you know, we use them constantly and you can use these for a bunch of different um, uses. You can use them to generate the actual content ideas like Quora is a great um, question site. So if you go to that site, you can actually put in some subjects that, are pertinent to your industry and see what kind of conversations are, are people are having, what kind of questions people are asking, what other pe how pe other people are answering them. And so that can be a great way to brainstorm some topics for, for your company. And it can also be something that you follow constantly and get alerts so that on an ongoing basis, you're seeing what's happening. And you know, you can participate directly in the Q and a also, like if you've created a blog, 
and maybe you you're monitoring you see someone asking the question you can go in there and write some some you know commentary and then link it back to your blog the um, uber suggest the google keyword planner the keyword tool again great tools to determine what kind of keyword phrases people are searching for you know longer long tail keyword phrases and again those can be effective to figure out what you want to frame your your topics on I set up tons of Google alerts on different topics that I, I you know like and I, I get the Google alert once a week and I I can see what other people are writing about and sometimes you know it just gives me an idea for a new topic or sometimes I want to share that and, and give my opinion on it so Google alerts I think is a great tool you know, Twitter, you can search on Twitter, you can do an advanced search, you can just put a, a pound sign in front of a, a keyword and again, see what people are saying, what other people are sharing. You can also follow the trends on Twitter. So, you, you know, when you're in your Twitter feed, there's a, an area that shows trends that are just kind of the overall trends. And again, you might see that, um, you know, today's National Pencil Sharpening Day. And, you know, maybe there's some pertinency there that you can play on. Or you can you can actually tailor it just for you. You can tailor it for your geography and for certain, um, you know, subject matters. I think trade show topics and keynotes are a great, you know, way to generate ideas. If you've got a trade show coming up or one that you just went to, you know, what were people talking about? What were the the keynotes on, what were the roundtables on, those could be great ways to come up with relevant topics. I like to look at reviews a lot. I like to go into, you know, Yelp, Google reviews and look, you know, people in my industry and our, our customers industry and see what people are raving about or, or also, you know, not raving about, complaining about to see if that creates some ideas. Podcasts are a great way. Books. I mean, you could take a book and you know do a series where you take a chapter at a time and just summarize it. So, books are a great way. Your past blogs. You know, think about how you can take your past blogs and add depth to them. Take it to the next level. You know, continue to educate. And then things like life hack. Great for headline ideas. You can go in and see what other people are doing and what's getting lots of play and just kind of adapt it to you. I mean, it could be on the Kardashians, but you could figure out how to adapt it to your, you know, concrete store. So there's, it's just a great way to, to see what, what grabs people's attention. HubSpot's got a great blog topic generator, um, Upworthy and BuzzFeed. Again, you could just, you know, get really good ideas for how to, how to come up with titles that, that grab attention. But Sumo, again, you can put in your your industry and, and keywords and you can see what other people are writing about and what's getting play, and then you can you can do it better. So those are some great tools. And if this seems overwhelming to you, you know, you can um, let Dave or I know. We will walk you through this, we'll do this with you so that you, you can learn how to use these on your own. But um, they're they're really great tools, they're really fun, and it's it'll it'll be a great way for you to kickstart the process. I just want to emphasize um, the the bullet point with your past blogs. We we're able to identify with with our analytics that the the great majority of our um, inbound um, hits to our website are from what we would describe as as old blog entries. And so just because you wrote something and it's you wrote it a month ago or two months ago or even three months ago, they're typically evergreen topics. Um, and they will still provide results for you. I mean, really, that's that's why we're blogging. So so that our website grows in size, uh, so that we have we have information on our site that is that is evergreen. Okay, so you've heard us say this a, a bunch of times. Uh, getting something done, e even poorly, get, making it bad and then making it better, is something that it holds back so many companies from doing many many things, but in particular, content marketing. Um, you know, I, I guess I guess people are afraid to fail or they're afraid to do it poorly. Um, but I promise you that if you're if you're experimenting and you're trying to do something good for your organization, it's going to be OK. Um, so we live by this every day. Just do it. Get it done. Uh, start creating content. Doing something poorly is better than not doing it at all. Um, if you can't do it, outsource it. And um, this last statement we also live by, and that's. What gets outsourced gets done. Yeah, I mean, we we certainly in our organization don't try to do it all. You know, there's things that we do really well, and the things that 
we don't or just you know don't want to do we outsource and it it it's you know such a great premise to to live by Wendy and I, you know, our backgrounds are, you know, we've, we've, we have our own, we've come from the agency world where we each had a, a marketing agency, a branding agency, and it was, a, it was a type of structure where, you know, we tried to do everything ourselves, n- not because of any other reason other than, eh, you know, we'll just do it because we can do it better or it, it'll take me longer to explain it, so I'll just do it. And I think what we have found in scaling our new business is, um, just what this says, it'll get done. Whereas in the other scenario, it typically doesn't get done or it gets done uh, to the detriment of the organization. I think too, the more you do it, the better it will get, you know, as we're developing, you know, our webinar series, our content, every time we do one of these, it helps us hone our message and us get clearer on how to explain things. So the, the process of creating content, it's, it's valuable, you know, from the inside out. It really does help you become a better business, a better communicator. It helps you refine your messaging. So, you know, you're not just doing it, you know, for your customers. I mean, you're doing it from their perspective, but it really does help you. And the process is so valuable. I mean, we've just been loving the process of constantly, you know, taking on new challenges where we don't always know how we're going to do it, you know, when we take it on, but the process of doing it has just helped us grow exponentially. And so we're going to leave you with uh, with some, we have three of these slides. Final thoughts, number one. So it's important to note that more than 50% of search now occurs on a mobile device. That may be a phone or a tablet, um, but more than 50% uh, is on a mobile device. So that means you, you really need to have, we really encourage uh, that you have your website on a, a device responsive platform. Um, a content management platform uh, like a WordPress is even better. Uh, it makes makes updating the, the content very easy. Um, and just a, a summary of what content marketing is, and that's, that's a piece of content that delivers essential information to the right audience, and it helps them uh, get to know you and ideally moves them further down into through your sales funnel. And content marketing is selling. I mean, let's, let's be straight here. Uh, it is educating, but we want to bring audience, uh, an audience into, into our sales funnel and get them uh, to know us, to trust us, buy from us, um, refer to us, and then repeat that process all over again. And most importantly, content marketing is always on. It's a always on, slow burn, necessary activity that every business should engage in. So we caught this this webinar, you know, creating content your customers will crave. And so this is just a synopsis of that. You know, content we all crave is content that reminds us life is short, reminds us that dreams can come true, gives us faith to believe for bigger things, reminds us that we matter, reminds us of of overlooked or forgotten basics, has unexpected twists, tells us a great story, takes us along on a jury, inspires us to take action, and makes us laugh or smile. Just like bacon does. <laughs> so here's here's just a quick visual as to you know what content can do for your your business. So if you think about you know what what you may do now, you, you know you you have the ability if you're in if you're in sales or marketing or, or you're the owner, in which case you're you're doing both. Um, you have a the ability to influence or reach what we may call a small group of people. And that's what's going on on the left, whereas on the right. With a lot of content, you know, I'm going to use a, uh, uh, an example here that's maybe extreme, but a Gary Vaynerchuk type um, personality, that's his reach on the right. He, because he is such a content creator and he has a position and he has something to say, you may not like it or agree with it or, or like the style, but he has something to say and his reach is enormous. And while many of us may never get to his reach, unless we write a couple best-selling books, we do have the ability to meet to reach a much bigger audience than we currently do. And even Google rewards the influencer. You know, if you're writing a lot of blogs or putting out a lot of content and sharing that on your social media, you are deemed a higher authority level than someone who's doing it sporadically. So it's it's really important to to think about it that way. So we're going to we're going to open it up to uh, to questions. I think um, if 
anyone has a question, they can type that in the chat box. And we'll give you a couple of seconds here to get going. Everybody see that? 